Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon. Young and Restless Rewind, The Dastardly Deeds of Cameron Kirsten. In 2003, the Newman family was in shambles. Nick and Sharon, Sharon Case, had become estranged after she admitted to her affair with Diego. Eventually, Nick decided to save his marriage, but when he peered into the window of their home, he spied Sharon passionately kissing his dad, Victor, who was strung out on painkillers and didn't realize what he was doing. When confronted by Nick, Sharon felt ashamed and left Geno City for some much-needed soul-searching. Sharon ended up in Denver, where she met a handsome businessman, Cameron Kirsten, one night at a bar. They retired to her hotel room, where they had sex, but he turned out to be a psycho and thrashed Sharon within an inch of her life. Sharon refused to call the police because she didn't want her encounter with Cameron to go public. Instead, Sharon laid low for weeks to allow her wounds and bruises to heal. Then she returned to Geno City. In time, Nick forgave Sharon for straying with Diego. But at the tail end of 2003, Sharon was horrified when Cameron turned up in GC. She learned that he was a wealthy software entrepreneur and through Nick, was poised to make a lucrative deal with Newman Enterprises. As Nick was trying to lock down the proposition, Cameron was tormenting Sharon about their one-night stand in Colorado, which she was desperately trying to keep Nick from discovering. Finally, Cameron blackmailed Sharon into meeting him at a shabby hotel, threatening that if she didn't agree to the rendezvous, he would blab their affair to Nick. The evening of their meeting, Cameron tried to rape Sharon. She grabbed the bottle of champagne that he had on ice and walloped him over the head. When she checked for a pulse and there was none, Sharon believed she killed her assailant. To cover her tracks, Sharon dragged the body out and stashed it behind a dumpster, convinced the falling snow would bury it out of sight. However, Sharon realized the snow would soon melt and that Cameron's corpse would need to be moved again. After lugging Cameron into the trunk of her car, Sharon tried to figure out where to dispose of him. She stopped at an out-of-the-way bar to use the ladies' room and she was confronted by her former best friend, Grace Turner, who was trying to find her boyfriend, Cameron. When Sharon opened the trunk of her car, she was shocked to discover that it was empty. Sharon went home but was plagued by the disappearance of Cameron's body and soon started having hallucinations of a dead Kirsten stalking her. Sharon feared that she was losing her mind. Nick and Sharon's friend Larry contacted her after being released from the hospital following a motorcycle accident and shared that he saw Sharon's car parked in front of the CD bar, came across Cameron's body, and moved it to a more secure location. She asked to see the body and Larry escorted Sharon and a curious Nikki to the sewer, but the face was too decomposed to make a positive ID. When the body was finally found in 2004, Sharon was stunned to learn that it was identified as her former high school boyfriend and Maria's father, Frank Barrett, an obvious setup to frame her for his murder, though she was never charged. Even worse, Cameron turned out not to be dead after all and was gaslighting Sharon. Soon after, Cameron abducted Sharon and took off with her in his private jet. However, there was an extra passenger on board, Nick, who had stowed away. He overpowered Kirsten, strapped him into a parachute and tossed him outside into the night air. Sharon and Nick also donned parachutes and jumped out of the jet. They found Cameron incapacitated with a broken leg. He was subsequently arrested and sentenced to prison. After serving a nearly 20-year sentence, Cameron was released but clearly had not been rehabilitated. In 2023, he headed to Geno City to settle some old scores. Soon, he kidnapped Nick and Sharon's daughter, Faith, strapped a bomb to her and demanded that Sharon meet him. Sharon and Nick arrived at the designated meeting place, a sewer, and a brawl between Nick and Cameron ensued. Sharon came armed with a concealed knife, which she plunged into Cameron's chest, killing him. The neon lights of Geno City buzzed like a beehive, flickering intermittently as though to the beat of the drama that never seemed to cease. At the center of this turmoil, a name whispered through the shadows like a ghostly echo, Cameron Kirsten. Known for his ruthless demeanor and chillingly calculated moves, Cameron had etched his name into the annals of the city's most nefarious figures. His deeds, infamous and many, had left an indelible mark on the lives of its residents. It all began when Cameron Kirsten first sauntered into Geno City, 
his presence heralded by an air of dark sophistication and an unsettling smile that never quite reached his eyes. At first glance, he appeared to be just another charismatic businessman looking to stake his claim. However, beneath that polished veneer lay a man driven by a sinister agenda, one that would unravel the lives of many. Cameron's vendetta was personal. Years before, he had been slighted by none other than Nicholas Newman, the heir to the Newman fortune. This grudge was not something he took lightly. He had returned to Genoa City with a meticulous plan to dismantle the Newman Empire, piece by piece, starting with its most vulnerable point, Sharon Newman, Nick's ex-wife. Sharon, whose life had already been a tumultuous roller coaster of heartbreaks and scandals, became Cameron's prime target. He approached her under the guise of a sympathetic ally, offering a shoulder to lean on in her time of need. Sharon, lonely and struggling to rebuild her life, found solace in Cameron's seemingly kind demeanor, unaware of the dark intentions lurking beneath his charming facade. Cameron's first move was subtle. He manipulated Sharon into a romantic entanglement, isolating her from her friends and family. He preyed on her insecurities, planting seeds of doubt and mistrust that slowly grew into a chasm between her and those she loved. Sharon, already fragile from her past experiences, fell deeper into Cameron's web, oblivious to the danger she was in. The turning point came when Cameron orchestrated a series of events to frame Sharon for a crime she didn't commit. A master of psychological warfare, he staged an elaborate ruse to make it appear as though Sharon had attacked him in a fit of rage. Bruised and battered, he spun a tale of fear and victimhood that painted Sharon as a deranged woman capable of violence. The city was abuzz with the scandal, and Sharon found herself ostracized and on the brink of losing everything. But Cameron wasn't finished. His next move was to further tighten his grip on Sharon by exploiting her vulnerabilities. He began to gaslight her, making her question her own sanity. Small, seemingly inconsequential incidents were orchestrated to drive her to the edge. Sharon's world became a disorienting maze of paranoia and confusion, with Cameron always there the ever-present puppet master pulling the strings. As Sharon's life spiraled out of control, Nicholas Newman started to sense that something was amiss. His intuition told him that Cameron was not the innocent victim he portrayed himself to be. Determined to uncover the truth, Nick launched his own investigation, digging into Cameron's past and his connections. What he discovered was a history of deceit, manipulation and destruction that painted a very different picture of Cameron Kirsten. The climax of Cameron's reign of terror came when he kidnapped Sharon, holding her captive in a remote location. It was a desperate move, one meant to break her completely. He reveled in her fear, feeding off the power he held over her. But Sharon, though battered and broken, found a spark of resilience within her. In a daring escape, she managed to break free from Cameron's clutches, her will to survive stronger than his malevolent intent. Sharon's escape was the catalyst for Cameron's downfall. With the evidence Nick had gathered and Sharon's testimony, the truth about Cameron Kirsten was laid bare for all to see. His carefully constructed facade crumbled, revealing the monster within. The authorities closed in and Cameron, realizing the game was up, attempted one final act of defiance. In a dramatic showdown, he was apprehended, his reign of terror brought to an end. But the scars he left behind remained. Sharon, though free, bore the emotional wounds of her ordeal. The people of Geno City, once captivated by Cameron's charm, were left grappling with the reality of the evil that had lurked among them. Nicholas, though victorious in his quest for justice, knew that the battle had come at a great cost. Cameron Kirsten's deeds were the stuff of nightmares, a dark chapter in the saga of Geno City. His legacy, one of manipulation and cruelty, served as a stark reminder of the depths to which one could sink in the pursuit of vengeance, and though the city moved on, the shadow of Cameron Kirsten would forever linger, a chilling testament to the darkness that can reside within the human heart.